play it somewhat safe. I just know we don't have the speed to make it through. But if we take a risk, then you know we hit great handoff, uh, uh, which you know we've had some times where we have. Then we're going to overachieve, right? And so we are going to stretch those zones. So, how do we figure it out? We race through the zone, okay? So this is to establish our marks. There is no baton involved in this drill. So we set a generic number of steps. Don't. This is just anecdotal off of years of experience. Boys, we generally start at 18. And girls, we generally a little bit less, but 14 to 20, because usually there's bigger variation in um, the speed of, of some of our girls in terms of, and usually it's just with the acceleration. Usually it's because the, on the girls' side, our outgoing runners don't do a great job of accelerating. No baton. The goal is beat each other to the end of the zone, right? This is a race. Finish line is the end of the exchange zone. Race each other, race each other to the end of the zone. So we're going to look for the right amount of spacing, and we're going to try and set up the right distance. The one thing we can't control is race day adrenaline, right? A race day personality. I'm sure we had, you know, some of you have had kids that, man, in practice they just don't get out, but in a race I know the kid is going to get out, or I know this kid gets a little jumpy in a race, so like they have a tendency to leave early, so. Ideally, maybe we have 18 steps. Well, I'm going to put it at 16 or 17 because I know that kid is still going to get out a little bit early. So here's what it would look like. Sorry. So this is the workout, right? And if we do this enough, say we do this three to four times, and then we do, we'll go through it with a baton. Well, now we've done six, seven, eight times 40 meters. Right? That's a pretty good speed workout. So this might be the whole workout for that, that 4 by one But we're racing through the zone. Okay? Here's my generic mark. Incoming runner is clearly beating the outgoing runner. Right? Okay. That gives us, it gives us a starting point. So first time through, if I saw this, I might move the steps back, maybe two steps. Right? So when I talk steps, I'm talking about just my generic heel to toe. So obviously, depending on how big your, you know, the feet are for your kids, but I always make sure that they measure it at the end of the session so that they know exactly this was X amount of your individual feet. Okay? So we make adjustments. Maybe we do that three or four times. Now we go with the baton. Okay? Now we've made it through. Now we've made it through with the baton. So if we race through three or four times, now we've made some adjustments. Now we go with the baton. Because in, in, in the kid's mind, if they don't have a baton, right, there's nothing to be worried about. So if I'm the incoming runner, I don't need to worry about slowing down or speeding up, right? I don't need to tell the other person to slow down. If I'm the outgoing runner, I don't need to worry about slowing down or being somewhat hesitant because I need to get the baton, right? So first time through, no baton. Here's another example of two different kids. Miles is not super fast. He's just kid, right? Clearly not going to make the exchange, right? So, we just, after this one, okay, if we were doing this a few times, I'd probably move the cone in, maybe, a, you know, two steps or whatever I think might work, and then now let's make some adjustments. Let's go through with the baton. Troubleshooting. So before you kind of make an adjustment, things to think about. If the exchange was too close, was the incoming runner coming in too fast? <clears throat> right? And I try to set them up like 40 meters away from the exchange zone or so. Um, were they starting too close? If we're talking, you know, um, if we're talking about, you know, maybe a 4x2, we don't do this on the 4x2, but just in general for spacing, right? Were they coming in too fast, too hot for a 4x2? <coughs> Did the outgoing runner, did they accelerate accurately? And I say accurately because you gotta know the kid, right? If they just get out slow, well, let's take it, you know, let's take that into account. Right? Did we share the lane? Do we need to change the stance? Right? If the exchange was too far, did my incoming runner back off and slow down when they got through the exchange zone? Did my outgoing runner leave on time? So here's here's an example. So cone was right back there, right? And this was this was like actually during the season, um, a session. Here's the cone, right? 
But before I said, oh, too far, we gotta move the steps in, I knew incoming runner Zoe, Zoe was, Zoe was not finishing well. Like I knew that, you know, so, so the next rep, the fix was, Zoe, you need to run the zones. You cannot back off, run all the way through the zone, chase her down, whatever, you know, cue you wanna use, race her through the zone. So without changing the steps, this is the next rep. Same steps, now we're fine, right? So before we, you know, go making adjustments to the steps, let's make sure we kind of check for, for some of those rules of finishing consistently, getting out consistently, those kind of things. Now here's another one. Oh, hold on. Let me tell you where we are first. <laughs> so we're right here. Okay, this is Mason. Um, this is on a 4 by 2 exchange. And I, I play it here in slow motion, right? So the fix needs to be, we don't need to change steps. I don't need to change Gideon, the kid getting out. But if we see Mason's baton, you see the baton stops moving because he gets to the zone and he just kind of does this, right? Instead of racing through the zone, instead of chasing him down, running through the zone, he backs off. And you kind of see the baton just sort of stays down here because he's basically stopped using that right arm and stopped running because he got to the zone. So he's done, right? His leg is over. So the timing piece. So if we just don't have a clean exchange, what was that because of? Did we share the lane? Did we go right to left or left to right, depending on what it's supposed to be? This is that one of the examples we looked at earlier. Did we punch too early, right? Miles is trying to punch the baton here. He's got the baton moving forward. Tyler hasn't even put a hand in. So again, like, are you waiting for the target and then you punch, right? So this is probably one of those ones where now that he's kind of out here with the baton, Tyler puts his hand back. We're probably going to have one, something where we're getting that kind of exchange. And then potentially on the outgoing runner, do they just have four hands? Again, incoming runner's responsibility, right? So we talk about not fishing for the baton, right? We're fishing, trying to do this. So it's the incoming runner's responsibility to make the exchange. Therefore, outgoing runner, you have essentially one job, high flat hand. High flat hand. So we're here in lane one, okay? So you watch, Dylan misses, okay? He misses, Rylan just keeps his hand flat. Right? Incoming runner can find it. They see the target. They see the hand. So he misses the first time. Rylan doesn't try and turn around, figure out where it is. Keep your hand high and flat. Incoming runner, you see it. It's your responsibility. They'll find it. They'll find it. Here's another one. So we're in lane six. Uh, blue tops here. Looks really, really jacked up, right? But outgoing runner, Delaney, she does a great job. High, flat hand. She feels the baton hit her hand. She knows she doesn't have it. But instead of looking back, slowing down, trying to move the hand around, she doesn't fish. She just keeps it steady. Kayla's going to get it back in there. Okay. Now, here's another example. And this one was messed up from the start. So this was uh, freshman to freshman, or uh, freshman to senior, sorry. Um, Kayla should have known better. Somehow she had a brain fart. I don't know what it was. Second leg of the four by one. Journey has it in her left hand like she should. Kayla, who's the third leg, somehow put her left hand back. So we were kind of messed up from the start there, right? Somehow they make the exchange. So then we watch Kayla here, our third leg, has it in her left hand. And this is the, by the way, this is the exact next day. So we just kind of messed up that one before, and then we come the next day in the finals, and somehow we mess up, uh, we mess that up again. But we keep the stick moving, we make the exchange, right? One of the things, Kayla was a senior, she was the only senior, the only senior sprinter girl we had last year in the whole group, and she was like team mom, team big sister, like all of those things in one. But one of the things I love is, during this exchange, she knew what happened yesterday. At some point, she realized 
She has the baton in the wrong hand, which probably as soon as she started running uh, after getting it, she realized it. She doesn't change hands, though, which I'm kind of okay with. But when she does say stick and Delaney puts her hand back, she has the left hand, she grabs her right hand and like, hey, we're making this exchange. But, you know, veteran move there. We're getting the exchange done. Can we be too close? Yes. So if we're too close, we end up not making the exchange, right? If everything happens too fast, we're too close. So we can be too close with the exchange. So again, we might not be focused on really stretching zones, but yeah, we can be too close uh, when we're trying to make those exchanges. You see I have an alternate running here. So like, Kelis, she's the alternate. You, need, you, you know, if she runs, she's probably gonna run, you know, second, third, or maybe, maybe Acre if you needed her to, I guess. But she's working on getting out. I also kind of, when I do that, I'll tell the kid like, hey, leave early, you know? So I want you to leave early, because <clears throat> I want to see, is Emma, the outgoing runner, is she gonna be patient? Is she focused, you know, focused on what she's supposed to be focused on? So that's too close. <clears throat> we would have checked all those other things and ultimately determined, yep, steps are too close. We need to move this step. Little trick I like to use, manipulating the zone. All right? So I do this when necessary. <coughs> Keep the stick moving through the zone. It minimizes the length of the slower runner. And this is usually a little trick for my second to third leg on a four by one. The faster runner carries the stick longer. Right? A lot of people put their fastest 100 meter person on the second leg of a four by one. Well, if that's your fastest person, let's let them Let's let them do their job, there, right? So, usually best for that second to third leg. If this is the, and this is kind of the old, you know, with the, with the small triangle here, because a lot of our tracks around us are still marked this way. But instead of starting here and putting our mark back here, we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna move it up here. So we're gonna start here, and we'll have a go mark that's gonna be back here, okay? So, Here's the start of the actual zone, right? We get that 30 meter zone. So we have two marks. So you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna count your steps. You're gonna have a mark here, which is your stance. And then you're gonna have your go mark, which is back there. So this is a senior or a junior handing off to a freshman. Okay. So it looks the same, right? But what we've done is we've manipulated the zone to where Jared is carrying the baton further into the zone, right? So my outgoing runner has less time to have to run with the zone, or with the baton. Here's, you know, what used to be halfway, but here's two thirds of the way through the zone, here's the end of the exchange zone. And we're making the exchange here, right? So my outgoing runner has carried the baton a heck of a lot longer, but we're still keeping the baton moving through the zone. As opposed to, you know, Dale taking off, you know, when Jared's halfway down the straightaway, so that we can keep him in the, in the right spot. <clears throat> so this is the group, group from last year. Um, Delaney on the, the incoming runner. Delaney's not super fast for 100 meters, but once she gets going, she can fly. She ran 55-4 in the 400. So A, she's fast and she's strong, right? So if she's my second leg, why not take advantage of that when Kayla's a 13-200 meter girl on the third leg here? So Again, regardless, like we tried moving the steps, it didn't quite work, so we just ended up changing, manipulating. Let's move the exchange. <clears throat> so here we are. Start of the, you can see where everybody else is lined up, and Kayla's like way up here, right? So this is the number is basically the, was the start of the zone. So we just changed where the exchange is taking place, right? So she's got a stance mark, She's got her go marks here, so she's got two little pieces of tape and a little zone, okay? And then when we watch it, time keeps moving, right? We keep the stick moving through the zone. And, you know, again, we keep, you know, in this case, and now, if I, again, we do this when necessary, right? So if I have two kids that are pretty much the same speed, second and third leg, we don't need to do much with it. Right? But we change where the exchange takes place. Right? So now, into the zone, you know, our stronger runner is carrying it further, and we're running deeper into the zone. So here we are, white jerseys, lane eight. Same, 
same kind of thing. Right, here are all these other runners taking off, you can't even see our runner, and we're making the exchange way up here. Right? So now, Kayla's running probably 15 meters less than these other girls, which is great. Right? I'll take that. Uh, another one, lane eight here. Got a lot of lane eights. <laughs> um, white jerseys again. So our second leg here, Sean was a 10-8, was a, a 22-1 kid. Handing off to a kid who probably couldn't, might struggle to break 12, might struggle to break 12 seconds in an open 100, right? But Chase, once he gets going, Chase, I mean, Chase has 11 flat speed, he just can't accelerate, right? So we manipulate the zone to where he's getting the baton way back here. This is our group that completely overachieved. Like there, Sean was a 10-8 kid, didn't have another, the, probably the next fastest open 100 meter kid was like 11-8. And then we were, but we were able to figure out chemistry. We ran a different order almost all the time. Um, <clears throat> changed some personnel, and then we finally got it. They ran the race of their lives at uh, at a lane one at our sectional meet to literally take the fourth spot uh, to qualify to state, and then um, somehow snuck their way into the finals. Okay, four by two exchanges. So. The rules are all the same. The rules are all the same, incoming, outgoing, right? They're blind exchanges, so the rules are all the same. They require more work and more attention, less exact than the four by one. Keep the focus on moving the stick through the zone. I'm so much less concerned with exactly where we are lined up. I'm less concerned with that free spacing because ultimately 800 meters worth of racing, three meters is not gonna make or break us, right? So if we don't get that meter of free space and whatever, that's okay. I prefer a blind exchange, okay, on a, on a four by two, um, because to me, keep the stick moving, we get a better acceleration from our outgoing runner, we're not wasting movements by having to turn and grab with an open exchange. I have used an open exchange, and I'll show you an example here where it just, we, we had to, right? Whether maybe sometimes if you're using an alternate and you just want a safe exchange, go with an open exchange. Um, <coughs> or we had a girl who just could not could not take a blind exchange. Okay, same principles though, and, and we certainly need to share share the win. Uh, four by two, a um, little bit of kind of my ideas. Mix the order. Um, try to figure out where kids are best. Um, Ultimately, the outgoing runner we use, our generic is three big steps. So if the, here's the beginning of the exchange zone, right? I'm gonna go one, two, three, and that's where I'm gonna start. And that's kind of where we, um, where we begin when we set up an exchange. Now, you get some kids who are gonna try and do that. It's like, okay, well, the three steps that I wanted you to have now turns out to be five. So, you know, for them, it's not heel toe, it's just a regular one, two, three, and then that's where I'm gonna stay. And then we adjust it from there, right? Uh, I have in the past used a hand mark. So um, usually it's a third of the way through the zone. So the kids would maybe have an extra tennis ball uh, and we'd figure out, you know, okay, if, you know, Mason, it's, you know, for Mason, it's, you know, six of these steps into the zone is a third of the way. So he puts his tennis ball there because ultimately, when they get to that tennis ball, if they haven't said stick, put your hand back, right? And so a hand mark is just, because ultimately they put a hand back, and what's that gonna do? It's gonna slow them back, right? Um, especially early uh, early in the season, um, I we kind of keep four by two exchanges somewhat close, because again, I just, whatever four we put out there, I just wanna see us run. So risk versus reward comes into play a lot for me in the four by two, right? What's the risk of stretching a zone, you know, of, you know, when we're doing exchanges, it's like, man, it looks, it looks okay, but it's a little close. You know, maybe I should tell, you know, tell them go three and a half or whatever. But ultimately, what are we? What's the reward of it? Maybe we, you know, run a half second faster, and you know, at a regular invitational, that doesn't matter, right? Are we good enough that a half second faster is going to keep us from qualifying? You know, through a round, usually not, right? 
Uh, four by two, so I do these on, on those tempo days, as sometimes as part of the workout, sometimes before the workout. Um, so we do our regular buildups. So three times 50 meter buildups, right? Regular buildups, we put spikes on um, after that. Then we'll do our four by two experience. On a speed endurance day, I might make this as part of the interval. Um, depending on your kids and what other events they are in, you can kind of be creative with, with how you set it up. Um, you know, if, if maybe the whole day is sort of exchange based, um, but set the distance for the incoming and outgoing runners, especially on these, uh, so that they're doing the same. So if you're doing them as kind of like after buildup, incoming runner, you're starting 40 meters back, outgoing runner, I mean, you're generally running the exchange zone, so that's 30 meters, so maybe put a cone 10 meters afterwards, um, which is where they kind of uh, quick note on order. So for me, that stagger is huge in a 4x2. So I want to put my fastest runner first. So Delaney, who was our, our 55-4 in the 4, she was 24-9 in the 2, she was our leadoff leg on the 4x2. Um, we had a, we had a, you know, a, a, comp, a, a somewhat comparable girl on the anchor who was 25-9, so she was no slouch, right? Um, but personality-wise, it also fit because the girl on the anchor, you would get a lot more out of her if she had to go chase other people down or if she felt like people were coming, you know, and she felt that pressure of people coming to get her, she, she ramped it up a notch. But I like to go, fastest person first, let's break that stagger, let's start putting pressure on other people, right? If, you know, if I'm back here in lane three, right, and lane four, lane four is up there, if all of a sudden I'm waiting on my person and I feel this person in lane four passing by me, I'm starting to think, man, it's the first leg. Like, you know, we gotta get all the way up there, you know, right there. So we're kind of putting pressure on other teams. Um, also with your first and your anchors, it minimizes the amount of work that they have to do. Right, so they're not a second and a third leg where they gotta do incoming and outgoing exchanges. Delaney was in the open two and the open four and the four by four. Our anchor leg was in the one, the two, the four by two, and the four by one. It's a lot of work. So I don't want to really over, overwork them on just exchanges, right? And it's a lot easier to sub them out, you know, at a, at a particular, uh, particular meet to put somebody else in. Uh, we are in lane three here in the pink. Now, Delaney to Kayla, that was the exact, that's a four by two exchange. Those were the same two girls that I showed you where we manipulated the four by one, four by two zone, or four by one zone, right? But I feel like because we, 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 we focus on a different exchange on a different day, it helps them understand the idea of the difference between a four by two and a four by one exchange, right? Kayla knew she gets out differently in a four by one and a four by two, right? Um, nothing really changes for the incoming runner because they still got to run the zone. But on that one, we did have really good spacing, right? But part of that is because, um, I mean, this was the end of the year, so they had probably done that, you know, between the two of them 50 times in terms of practice and, and race reps. But ultimately, the lady runs through the zone, she punches straight, Kayla has a high flat hand, and she leaves on time and under control. Maybe for, for kids, the, the under control piece when they're getting out for a four by two is helpful, right? So we still want you to, we still want you to accelerate. We still want, you know, it's still a four by two, but you gotta be under control, right? And that kind of helps maybe minimize, uh, you know, them blowing through the exchange. Here's an open one because we had Zoe, our anchor leg there. She was awful at a blind exchange. Like we probably had more of an op more of a chance of, of dropping the baton because Zoe was just awkward and, and couldn't figure it out. So I was like, you know what? Keep the stick moving. And we're gonna do an opening string. So we have we have done that, uh, you know, like I said, when necessary. Never leave the zone without the stick. Uh, we are, ah, right here. Okay, so this was the state prelims. Um, we changed the order a little bit. Uh, our girl that was the anchor was having a hip issue, so at state we pulled her from the open one and the open two. She only ran the four by two and the four by one, and she only ran the four by two final because we didn't. I asked my trainer, and trainer was like, "You probably got three races, four max." So I was like, "All right, Harper, 
our 400 800 drill can get us through. Kayla, second leg, used to getting it from Delaney, so she's used to getting it from a 24, a 24 second girl. Now she's getting it from a 27 second girl. And she's still, we changed the steps, she still, you know, took off. But ultimately doesn't leave the zone without the stick. Right? And so, you know, gives us another day, come back the next day, we change up, you know, put Journey, our girl, back on there, we went back to our regular order, and we won a state championship. But, we had done this in practice enough of don't leave the zone without a stick. Make the exchange. Here's another example of that. Uh, white jersey, so that's Layla to Journey, so freshman to freshman. That's always, it's always going to produce uh, interesting results for, for you. Don't leave the zone without a stick, right? And we didn't, no, we didn't win the race. No, we didn't PR, but we ran a decent time, right? But here's the key piece. And that was at KU Relay, so sort of high stakes, high pressure, right? And we don't have a great exchange. We learn from it, and then here we are in the state finals, same girls, right? Same girls, and they learn, they learn a lesson from it. Journey learned how to, you know, get out under control. Layla learned she got to finish through the zone, right? You can't back off. And so freshman to freshman, state finals, they made the exchange, right? They learned a lesson, and they made the exchange. Kind of uh, out of time here, but and this really isn't too complicated, but four by fours, um, we do an open exchange. And again, the key is keep the baton moving through the zone. So we use a uh, key piece for the outgoing runner, good position. So we're not gonna stand up like this, right? We're gonna get in a stance, like if I said you're running a 400 and I'm not letting you use blocks, what kind of position are we gonna be, right? Maybe a three, you know, something. So we want to be in a two point, feet are pointed forward. I'm going to bend at the knees, right? And I'm still going to be in a good acceleration position, probably, you know, waving my guy in, you know, whatever it's going to be. Incoming runner, your job, you are not giving the baton. Now we kind of change it, right? You are the statue of liberty. This is your job. You keep running through the zone, right? And once, once you get there, you shorten quick with your steps, just like normal. You're the Statue of Liberty. You don't give the baton, you just hold it right here. All right, just keep running through the zone, hold it right here. Outgoing runner, it is your job to grab the baton. So we do a look, run, look, look, okay? Once he gets there, and again, this takes buildups and practice and stuff, just kind of judge your incoming runner. I tell them usually like a meter or two away. Look, run, we take three hard steps, and then we look back. And when we look back, we're looking back to grab, to snatch, to take the baton. Okay? Follow the, uh, make a V, and I tell them your eyes should follow your hand when you reach back. So we're not just still looking forward doing this, right? As I'm, I look, run, now I look back, reach back, grab the baton. And so we'll do them as buildups, 50 meter buildups. Incoming runner comes in 50 meters, outgoing runner. Runs 50 meters into, you know, off the turn. Look, run, reach back, grab the baton. Uh, and here we are. This is a much older video. Um, but outgoing runner, snatching it from him. Right? Incoming runner, he probably maybe held it up a little bit too soon, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Here's a great one. So... Gapping teams through the exchange zone. So we're in the black and blue as opposed to the team in the all blue. But we're even right here going into the exchange. And I'll slow it down for a, in a second here. But then you look all of a sudden, now we have almost a 10 meter lead. Just through the exchange zone, but it was a, a dead even race. All right? and that's because when you look at it, this other team that was in blue their guy right here just stands there. Okay. We're doing a look, run, look. Dale's turning back, snatching the baton. They made, we made the exchange right in the middle of the zone, basically right at the finish line, right, for other than your first exchange. Whereas they just kind of wait, right? Here we are, again, exchange should happen probably in the middle, like middle of the zone, which is basically the finish line, right? 
can we keep the stick moving through the zone? Being able to navigate traffic, so there's a little chase in there, right? Kind of smushed in there, but ultimately we can still get out, we can still get out in space because we're making sure that we're looking, that we're running, that we're accelerating and, and getting through the zone. Here's Chase again. One thing I love is his body position, right? We do this in practice where, you know, we'll have fun and, you know, I get a bunch of people lined up and kind of bumping and whatever. But Chase really, like, he's kind of the first person I've actually seen, like, apply what we did in practice. But he's in a good position and he's kind of like, no, you're not going to make me move down, right? I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand in here and, and hold my spot. Now, I don't like that he, and he's kind of hard-headed sometimes and he just wants to do this because he watches college guys do it, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, being able to navigate traffic, being able to deal with um, those kind of things, and we set that up in practice. I'll do like three kids at a, you know, at a time and set them up. You go and then you go. And, you know, we're starting 50 meters out. Sometimes I'll jump in there and I'll be like, hey, I'm going to start in front of you and then you're going to come and you're going to pass me. But we do those in warm-ups. Um, we do them on, you know, we talk through those scenarios. We set those kind of scenarios up um, just to kind of, you know, rep through them. But those stationary drills, um, I do those on, uh, I teach those on recovery days, right? And so, you know, not a lot to do on a recovery day. You can only do, you know, so much foam rolling and, and so much band work and that kind of stuff. So we'll kind of set up little groups where it's like one group is going to go do foam rolling, another group's going to do herd mobility, and then another group's going to go over here with, with, you know, with the coach, and we're going to talk through blind exchange. You can get 20 batons out there, and everybody grab a partner, do your right hand, do your left hand, incoming, outgoings, all that. And then 20 minutes, and we'll rotate stations, right? So that we don't have to take a lot of time, uh, you know, on a typical day to try and get, to try and get through that. Okay? Any questions? <clears throat> 